Well, last night it was the zombie takeover. Today the Braves were throwing it back to last century. The home team donning the retro jerseys and even the concession prices. Hot dogs and it were a buck and popcorn and peanuts were just 25 cents a pop. A great throwback night at the Ted tonight. The Braves were celebrating their first world championship 100 years ago back in 1914 when they were the Boston Braves. The Braves trying to win back to back games for the first time since last month. Freddie Freeman getting things off to an early start has this double to right that brings around Phil Gosselin in the first. Braves go up one nothing a couple of batters later. Chris Johnson keeps things moving with his RBI single to center two nothing Braves and in the fourth Johnson singles to center again. Braves go up four to two there in the sixth. That would be enough for the Braves tonight. They hang on to win it four to three. That's just a testament to my teammates being on base and uh, and uh, them swinging the bat well and, and me coming up in those opportunities. I'm I'm I'm, I'm glad that uh, I'm getting hits and being able to help the club in, the, in that sense. Well, first impressions are kind of a big deal. Anton Smith got one heck of an impression of Jadavian Clowney tonight. May I introduce you to the hit part two? There's no getting around that guy. You've got to block Clowney. Falcons, Texans tangling in tonight's preseason game in Houston. Pick it up with this play in the second quarter. Julio Jones makes the catch and takes a hit. Julio played for the first time this preseason, but on that play, Sam Baker goes down with a knee injury. He be carted off the field there, so all the attention turns to the rookie tackle Jake Matthews. He was going through some growing pains of his own on this play, but here is some good news for the Falcons offense. Sean Renfrey hits Devin Hester for the touchdown in the second quarter to tie the game. Houston answers back with a score of their own when Devere Posey hauls in the Ryan Fitzpatrick pass. Texans leading 23-7 in the fourth quarter. Plenty of football to go around tonight. The Jets and Bengals also going at it in Cincinnati. Falcons get the Bengals in week two. First drive for Cincinnati. Andy Dalton finds the former dog A.J. Green for the 21-yard pickup. A few plays later, Dalton hooks up with Mohamed Sanu on the 43-yard touchdown pass. Bengals go up 7 to nothing. Dalton was 8 for 8 for 144 yards tonight. Jets, though, would go on to win it 25-17. Elsewhere in the NFC South, the Dolphins and Tampa take on Lovey Smith and the Buccaneers early in the second. Gerald McCoy gets to Ryan Tannehill to force the fumble on the sack. Ball is recovered by former Yellow Jacket Michael Johnson for the Bucks. Later, second and goal, Josh McCown finds Vincent Jackson in the back of the end zone for the score as the Bucks take a 7-3 lead there. Miami outscored the Bucks 17-7 after that to win it 20-14. The countdown to kickoff is just 14 days away for the Georgia Bulldogs. Sanford Stadium is going to be rocking a little bit like this, maybe more so when the Clemson Tigers visit Athens for the team's season opener on August 30th. But before kickoff in two weeks, things were a bit more low-key at the stadium today. No cheering from the stands, but there was plenty of photos being taken for the Bulldogs picture day. Uga, Coach Mark Richt, and the whole gang made their way to the stadium after snapping this team photo at the UGA track. Over at Bobby Dodd Stadium, this is video from Georgia Tech as the Yellow Jackets scrimmage early today. During last week's intra-squad game, we didn't see much from quarterback Justin Thomas and B-back Zach Lasky, but today we did. The entire offense looked pretty good, in fact. Those guys didn't turn the ball over once. Yellow Jackets say they feel really good with where they're at at this point, just two weeks away from their opener against Wofford. Uh, I think it's, we're in great shape. I mean, I talked to the guys, and you know, usually a 17-play drive. I mean, you're feeling your legs are feeling pretty heavy, but I think we, pra we practice a lot of no huddle. That kind of gets our legs fresh. I mean, I felt fresh after that drive, and, really? and uh, that's something that I haven't noticed in the years past. And the urgency is a little higher over at Georgia State. The Panthers start off the entire college football season with their season opener coming in a week and a half. GSU will host Abilene Christian on Wednesday, August 27th in the Georgia Dome. The Panthers scrimmage today and Coach Trent Miles says the players can use some more coaching, but they do have the one thing you can't coach and that's speed. We're a fast football team. Our kids move around pretty good. Uh, it was a little warm for them, but they still ran well. Uh, a lot of things to clean up, a lot of small details we've really got to pay attention to, not just from offense and defense, especially, but from a coaching standpoint for a game, you know, to be game ready. But uh, our kids' effort won't be bad and their, their speed will be good. 
for many high five schools. They're less than a week away from kickoff, and I can't think of a better way to start the new season than with the high five caravan. K Rod and company coming at you. They're mixing up things a bit this year. We're talking big Peach State rivalries on Monday. We'll start at Bowden and Bremen High Schools, who annually battle for the old Seal Trophy. Then we'll head to Fairburn to visit with Langston Hughes and Creekside High Schools, a rivalry that just keeps getting better and better every year. The high five caravan coming to a high school near you that starts on Monday. Turning to the track NASCAR Nationwide Series at another road course this week at the Mid Ohio Sports Car Course. Chase Elliott in the nine leading the points heading into this race. Chase would finish fourth today. Winning for the first time was Chris Busher, and it wasn't easy. Busher having to push a lap car out of his way on the final lap to take the checkered flag. Round three at the Wyndham Championship from Greensboro, Greensboro, and the story of the day is Nick Watney, 15th hole. He sinks the birdie putt, moves to 13 under par there. Then on the par for 18th, Watney buries the long putt off the green for another birdie. He shot a third round 65 and leads the pack at 14 under heading into Sunday's final round. Nationals beat the Pirates tonight, so the Braves are still six games back of their NL East rival.